The movie starts with showing a girl named Jamie, an angsty Gen Z high schooler who, of course, doesn't have a great relationship with her mother. You've seen this troupe time and time again. But it's Halloween night, so Jamie's mom, Pam, is extra paranoid. Because 35 years ago in 1987, three of her friends fell victim to the infamous 80s masked killer, the Sweet 16 Killer. However, the past always comes back to haunt you, and the Sweet 16 Killer strikes again, attacking Jamie's mom on Halloween night. Which I'm not going to lie, she is hella prepared like channeling some Laurie Strode vibes, but unfortunately joins her three friends as another victim. Jamie and the townsfolk are distraught, because the Sweet Sixteen killer has been gone for decades, so why now? A random abandoned amusement park, science fair exposition scene shows that Jamie is freeing Amelia is building a time machine. Yeah, this is solely a plot device, learning she developed this off Lauren, her mother's plans, building it into an old photo booth machine. Jamie is, of course, still torn up about her mother's killing, but soon becomes a target herself as the Sweet Sixteen killer chases her around this abandoned amusement park with Jamie hiding in this same old photo booth machine. And you, you see where this is going? as the killer attempts to stab Jamie, but instead stabs the control panel of this makeshift time machine, activating it and sending Jamie back to the decade of big hair and tubular tunage. 1987, the same year the Sweet Sixteen killer first struck, here it's straight up back to the future, with Jamie having to warn everyone of the impending doom of course thinking she is a lot of crazy, as she learns her teen mom, dad, and others are far from their adult personas back in present day. Now, with this being a time travel movie, concepts and rules need to be established. But it's soon realized that certain events from the past, like where victims were killed, begin to change the future because of Jamie's involvement. Rightfully so. What do you think this is? End game. So aside from poking fun at time travel movies being convoluted, here it's explained that time is like a river. Jamie essentially ran upstream and jumped back in. Everything keeps flowing, so whatever she changes, changes the future for better or worse, as it's still playing out. Amelia. The police. People are looking for her, but have an inkling she's in the past, proven by old photos now showing Jamie was present. Now, I did think it was clever to explain all of these future changes away as the Mandela effect. So thumbs up for creativity. This all leads to a Halloween-themed amusement park end sequence, with a couple of Pam's friends unfortunately still becoming victims, despite Jamie's future foresight. The top of the suspect list is Damon. The reason so is because his sister was teased. Pam and the others called her Fat Trish, and she had unfortunately died in a drunk driving accident a year prior. So motive is there. The group sets up a trap in the dollhouse of horrors, all waiting to jump the Sweet Sixteen killer if when they show up to claim their final victim, which happens. But luckily, Kara Pulls, a literal Grim Reaper, stabbing the killer with her sithy, revealing it to be Doug Summers. Believe me, an out-of-left-field reveal, but they all realize he had been dating fat Trish, and all of them were responsible for her drunk driving accident night by teasing her and feeding her shot after shot, like Lil John at the club. Girlfriend revenge was the motive, and the Sweet Sixteen killer is finally gone. You really thought it's going to end soon, but no. As a new Sweet Sixteen killer takes Marissa's life and runs off, Jamie is running out of time, so heads to the Gravitron, where Lauren has set up a new and improved time machine, using the G-forces of the spinning Gravitron to power it. 
However, like a bad case of the herp, the killer pops back up, having one last go at Jamie. As the Gravitron fires up, Pam jumps in, making it a tag team match in one of the most logically physics-broken fight scenes I've ever seen. How is he standing? Where are the G-forces? Does anyone give a shit anymore? Pam is stabbed, but luckily ejected out of the Gravitron, ripping off the killer's mask, revealing that the second killer is Chris Dubasage? Yep. He had killed Pam in present day to get more content out of the Sweet Sixteen killer for his true crime podcast, and then headed back in time to make sure the murders still happened, so he could still have a podcast. Which meant stopping Jamie from solving the murders and telling everyone what she had learned. Also part of Dubasage's motives were that he felt second banana to his father, a Pulitzer Prize-winning news broadcaster, while Chris was due out a podcast host. Hey, man, whatever gets those numbers up. The scuffle between Jamie and Chris lasts about three seconds as Jamie shoots him with a nail gun, sending him flying into the Gravitron wall and, due to the sheer force, explodes into a pink mist cloud. Cleverly teased by Doug earlier in the movie, Jamie is transported back to 2022, very much happily ever after. Everything changed in her favor, like the end of Back to the Future, as adult Lauren, who was basically Basically, Doc Brown sits her down to tell her everything that changed due to her involvement with the past. I guess the final reveal is that her parents got together well before they were supposed to, so she has an older brother named Jamie, and her name is now Colette. So guys, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon for more movie recaps like this. So we will see you guys in the next video. Till then, goodbye.